Hey everyone, it's Vosk. I'm here with Tails today, and you're watching the Vosk on YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be bringing you inside my crypto mining shed and explaining how I built it. After watching this video, you will understand all the basics, and if you want to, you'll be able to build out your own cryptocurrency mining shed. Hey guys, 25 up votes, and Miss Voss gets a date. First off, why? Why did I want to build a crypto mining shed? I wanted to get into cryptocurrency. I saw the vision, I saw the dream. I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to get in on the gains and have fun and learn along the way. So instead of just buying into cryptocurrency with just the cash I had, which to be honest, wasn't that much, and be able to get a finite amount, I decided to split my investment with about 25% of my money invested into cryptocurrency. So I bought several Bitcoin at about a thousand bucks. And then I put the rest of my money and also leveraged a lot of money on credit cards. And I'm not recommending that or I'm not recommending anything. This is all for entertainment purposes only. But I decided to do that because I saw, thought that I saw a clear vision and wanted to take that risk. And I was hoping the reward would obviously be greater than or warrant the risk taken. So I built out a mining farm with all of my savings, all of my cash. I sold a bunch of stuff. And then I also leveraged some money that was taken against credit cards on 0% interest for either six months months, nine months, 12 months, 15 months, it varied on the credit card. And I applied to so many credit cards, they just started to completely deny me. Hey Chris, what's going on? All right, so real awkward, my neighbor just came out, awesome guy, but he doesn't exactly know what I do here. And it's just kind of a weird thing. So I try not to bring it up with really anyone, obviously. So I've got my phone in my hand, kind of acting like I'm on speakerphone, probably not even a good trick. And you can probably see the camera from this window, but let's carry on with the video and talk about my setup and the placement, which was the next part that I wanted to talk about the site where are you going to put your cryptocurrency mining shed we dug into the dirt higher than me i'm six feet tall right so we dug higher than my head probably about seven feet straight down from the highest spot once we dug it out i laid down a bunch of gravel to help with all the drainage issues then we went ahead and dropped a 10 by 12 shed this was built by an amish company in pa they do good stuff and I'm like, I can buy a better shed than I could build in a much quicker time. And I'm racing against the time of crypto last summer. And I, this structure was actually dropped here exactly a year ago. So it's kind of fun to make this. So I got the shed and I had it set up to basically match my house. I paid a little bit more than you should on a crypto mining shed because I wanted it to look a little bit nicer and be a little higher quality and help the home's value as opposed to taking away from it. If you're doing this strictly from a financial move, get a cheap shed, get one that works, understand that you're gonna be cutting a lot of holes in it and that's okay for what you're doing because hopefully it all works out. That's why you're doing it, right? Next up, electric. Obviously you're gonna need a lot of electric. My house has a 200 amp panel in it. So I'm gonna take 100 amps off of it and that's what I did. And I put a 100 amp sub panel in this shed. So I've got 100 amps usable in the shed. With that, I created four 30 amp outlets, which is more than 100 amps, but I understand that and I'm never going to go above that. When you're using all this electric, you need to understand you got to keep it with the 80% rule. So what exactly does that mean? If you run 100 amps to your shed, you can only utilize 80% of it 24-7. That is going to be your amp load. L630P is the outlet that we're going to be using and that is what these PDUs are going to run off of. Trip light are great. I get them right off Amazon and you run C13 and C14 cables, which look just like this. These are going to work with all your power supplies whether they're server style or ATX you know standard gaming PC style otherwise if it's not this outlet you're going to be using a C19 to C20 which is the other common outlet this style you'll see on heavier duty power supplies such as an EVGA 1600 watt power supply in addition to these four outlets you're going to want to run a simple 120 volt outlet these four outlets i just described were all ran 240 volt on 240 volts you're going to use 50 percent of the amps that you would use on 120 volt 120 volt is standard us electric it's what all your house is wired up as 240 volt is going to be a thicker wire capable of carrying a much denser load and with this it's critical if you're going to take your mining operation seriously you can get by with 120 volt and if that's easier for you to set up yourself or you want to cheap out on a Originally, and that's gonna be cheaper to implement. I understand that and that's fine, but you will use slightly less electric and you will use half the ampage. Thus, I could run double the farm, double the miners in this shed with 240 volt as compared to 120 volt with the same amp consumption. Granted, my electric bill will be higher with double the miners, 
but I will have the capacity to run that double minor usage. So you've got your four outlets, 240 volt, 30 amp, but you're gonna hook up your PDUs, which are like basically just imagine giant outlet extenders and slash surge protectors. They're gonna protect your rigs if they trip. You also wanna add a whole house surge protector to your panel. This is critical because you need to protect your investment here. This is the last thing that I would skimp on. And normally they're a couple hundred bucks and you pay someone a couple hundred bucks to put them in. As far as actual electric cost, set up something like this could range somewhere between 1500 bucks to 3000 bucks depending where you are and who does your work if you do it yourself and if you get a good deal or if you get ripped off there's a ton of variables but that gives you some kind of window window to work with i also love for people to share their input in the comments below how much did you pay for your electric and what did you get for that payment because i think that's a that'd be a really good resource to have only other piece of electric you will need to run is maybe a couple lights in there if you want to do that as well as exhaust fans which i will get to all the heat management stuff Stuff here at the end in addition to electric obviously we're gonna need network how are we gonna get our Ethernet in there how are we gonna run these mining rigs while you can run mining rigs off of Wi-Fi I do not recommend it especially if your operation is not just a hobby but a serious business venture of yours so the simplest thing to do is to just run an Ethernet cable into your shed hook it up to a switch and get a switch that is capable of as many ports as you need or you think that you may need. I have a 24 port switch and that's gonna be plenty. So getting internet in your shed is really that easy. Just need an ethernet cord in there. Otherwise, for me personally, I ran my coax cable into the shed because it actually runs into the house right there and I regret doing that because the Wi-Fi in the house has been mediocre at best ever since then. So right now I'm in the process of moving that back into the house, drilling another hole through the wall and getting ethernet set up in there. We're in the, running the same setup. I'm gonna get the same performance in the shed that I am right now with way better Wi-Fi in the actual house. And I even splurged on this little gaming router because I'm sick of lagging. Now let's talk heat management, the most important part of your crypto mining project. A lot of people set up a lot of farms in their basements and they're like, wow, it's incredibly hot in here. I didn't expect this. Well, here's your warning. It's going to get really hot. Electric usage equals heat output. So with all that in mind, you're going to need to put a big emphasis on your heat management. For me personally, I was in over my head last summer and I just ran with what I could figure out. So we punched maybe like 12 or so vents in the side of the shed. They're four inch holes in diameter. Behind them is a filter. I just use like a basic mesh bug net. And while this kept the majority of big bugs out, a lot of little bugs would get through, all pollen would get through, which is disgusting, and a lot of dirt and dust. So this is a very primitive filter setup and leaves you with a dirty farm. However, if you're going for bottom dollar to not have filters that are higher quality and will actually filter and be good, and you'll need to replace those semi -re really regularly, then this is a good option. For exhaust, we have three attic fans installed, which actually you see right behind me. I have them off for the video. They're a little loud and they move some serious air. 1500 cubic feet per minute per fan. So 4,500 CFM for all three of these fans. And I took off the thermostat and so they're just gonna be always on or always off. With the amount of miners that I have in the shed, which right now are probably pulling about 40, 50 amps, 24 seven. I just leave all three on all the time, especially because I'm here in Virginia. Virginia is very, it gets very hot in the summer and very cold in the winter. As far as problems experienced in the cold, the only issue I had was that their actual switch got so cold it just kind of shut off. I would unplug and plug it back in, we'd be back off to the races. So I just bought a replacement for the one that I had and it's been working perfect ever since. As far as heat management and temperature in the actual shed, it's gonna be about whatever it is outside. You're using ambient air cooling. So the air can't really be any cooler than it is outside because you're filtering that air through. But understand that, you know, if this air is something like, you know, 40, 45 Celsius, that is way cooler than a mining rig running at 70 Celsius. And that difference, I mean, even if we got 100 degree air at Fahrenheit and we've got 150 degree Fahrenheit cards on your rigs, that's way cooler with that air blowing through all your cards and getting exhausted right out. So that's how the swarm operates. And I have been through the hot blazing days of midsummer, now going on twice with this setup. And why it may not be the best setup in the world, it is certainly a functional setup that has worked for me. And I've never lost any kind of cards, you know, to my knowledge, to heat. And I really haven't even had any rigs or cards go down besides one which was I bought used. Lessons learned for heat management for me big time was the fact I don't have enough intake square footage. 
I underestimated how much I would need and I was hoping that having a little bit smaller would create this big vacuum that would pull this air in hard and thus it would be like I have all these fans and those would be hitting the rigs and giving them you know air at a higher velocity and thus hopefully cooling it more but you know granted all I ever did was physics 101 in college so I'm clearly no expert here but the farm still works ultimately this crypto mining shed has been a crazy fun time consuming expensive and just really at many times overwhelming adventure and i might say adventure twice but i wouldn't change it i've had so much fun doing this and i've learned so much and really gotten in contact with a bunch of awesome people including you the community here by doing this this has been the most fun part of the boss coin journey so i'm open to all feedback on the shed if you've got ideas for improvement you know, i'm not looking to take over the world with the shed but if it's a simple you know cheap thing to implement i'm absolutely open to it at the end of the day the shed is also a business and i don't want to waste money on fruitless things for example something i forgot to talk about earlier ac units a lot of people use ac units i understand that that's kind of what you need to do based off where you have your farm inside of your house but i would never implement an ac unit on a structure like this because if you're moving the exhaust air like that you're just throwing all that cool air out right out with the hot air so it's really useless. And in addition to that, you have, you'll just raise your electric bill. And when times get tough like they are now for mining, you're gonna bleed out first because you're wasting electric on stuff like that. The only electric I, I pay is for these fans to have a move in that air. Other than that, it's, you know, it's about as cheap as you can get for the operating costs on something like this. Also by doing it on my own proper, property, my only expense is the simple fact uh, or the simpleness of setting it up the, the cost for all these components i don't have overhead and that's a big deal when it goes turn when you go to the longevity of mining my electric rate is mediocre i pay about 10 and a half cents some people think that's good some people think that's that's not that great all in all even right now at the end of july i'm still turning a good profit on mining and i'm happy to be here so i want to thank all you guys for watching this video leave some comments below let me know what you think show me your farm i'm all ears for i love this kind of stuff see you next time I'll be home.